Welcome to June's Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is out of boundary paths. There is an m times n grid with a ball, like this, like so. The ball is initially at the position start row, start column. You are allowed to move the ball to one of the four adjacent four cells in the grid, possibly out of the grid, crossing the grid boundary. You can apply at most max move moves to the ball. So given the five integers, m, n, max move, the start row and start column, return the number of paths to move the ball out of the grid boundary. Since the answer can be very large, return it modulo 10 to the ninth power plus seven. So we can already kind of tell that this is probably gonna be a recursive solution. What's gonna be our base case? Well, if the ball is out of bounds, okay, that means we've found a path that we can hit it out of bounds here. So uh, that would be one of the base cases if we find that either our row or column are out of bounds, then we're going to return a one. Now, otherwise, if we run out of moves, if m equals zero, then we also return, well, we turn zero at that point. If we have no more moves left, then, then there's nowhere else to go. Now, one of the things to note is it doesn't matter how many moves you have left. Like, uh, if we had two moves here, we could just start off with the first move and move out if we wanted to and just forget about the other moves. Or we could, um, move to one of the other cells, then move out of bounds. So all of those need to be accounted for. So if we were to do this brute force, what would we do? We just write a recursive function and we would pass in <clears throat> the row and column that we're at as well as the number of moves that we have left, right? So uh, let's start with that. Here's our edge case, or here's our base case. If row is less than zero or column is less than zero or row is greater or equal to m or column is greater or equal to n, then we return a one. Now, otherwise, if <clears throat> m, number of moves that we're on, if we have zero moves left, we just return here, turn to zero. And we're gonna recursively call, what I'll do is store the answer, the number of moves at each recursive stack. And we'll say four, let's call it x, y in, uh, Let's see here, I'm gonna just make all four directions. So this would be up, down, right, and left. Okay, and all we'll do is add to our answer, we'll recursively call row plus x, column plus y and m minus one. Now whatever this answer is, we return it, and then we can just literally return the recursive of, let's see, start row, start column, and the number of max moves. And that would be it. But unfortunately, this is gonna hit a time limit exception. Oh, let's see here. There's no attribute C. Oh. So this is going to reach a time limit exception. And the reason for that is, well, what's the time complexity on this? We have four directions we can go. So that would be four to the nth, po nth power, B, or I should say M power, call it capital M, meaning number of moves, right? And this is just, uh, even though M is only up to 50, it, it, it could be uh, too big here. So what's one way that we could optimize this? Well, we can use memoization, right? Notice how uh, we only have three states, or I'm sorry, three par parameters. So therefore we're only gonna have a combination of states R times C times M, right? And that's gonna be less than four, four to the nth power. So what we'll do is we'll create a, um, a, memo a lookup table and we'll say if Uh, this parameter is in memo, we just return memo like that. And make sure to add it right here. It is there. So uh, this will actually uh, reduce it down to a call m times n times max move time complexity. And the reason for that is we're not gonna be recalculating uh, for paths that we've already, we've already taken with the same number of moves. So let's make sure this works as well. And looks like it does, so let's submit it. 
Oh, I forgot. I have to do modulo to yeah, modulo to the tenth to the ninth power plus seven. Okay, let's try that one time. And there we go, accepted. So again, time complexity is going to be m times n times max move, and space complexity is going to be the same. Now you could reduce the space complexity if you used like a array, uh, but it wasn't didn't really seem worth it. It just overcomplicated the code. Really, it's kind of the same thing at the end of the day. So uh, if you were to use some sort of you know dynamic programming array, it'd have to be like a 3D matrix, and it was just too confusing. So. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.